about that. And I'll let them introduce themselves. And I'm going to try and be a good pastor and keep this announcement time very short. Um, but first, let's, let's just open up the word of prayer. Lord, we do want to just seek your face this very day. We want to know you. We want to pour, have you pour yourself out. We can't go anywhere without you tonight. We need you. The next breath is from you. Thank you, your Lord, for that breath. But help us, your Lord, not to just thank you for each and every breath, but seek your face for life itself, for eternal life, as well as having that abundant life that you so promised and have given to us freely. All we have to do is call upon the name of Jesus. May many more people come through these doors as the, the songs of, just reverberate through these doors and out into the public. People are just intrigued, wondering what is alive. And we can let them know Jesus Christ is alive. And all this we pray. Amen. Just a little uh, bit of information. Please come on in and uh, make yourself at home. Um, but talking about at home, in case during the service you do need to relieve yourself. We do have restrooms right through this door and off to your left. Also, if you have young ones, they are free to stay out here. We love to have them. We don't mind if they're crying. If they're throwing a tantrum, that means, hey, someone's awake. <laughs> but we also have a nursery with uh, nursery workers back there who are more than willing and able to provide uh, help for your child. Also, we have a table back here with lots of information. If you don't have a Bible, we have some. Of New Testament and Psalms provided by the Friends of the Gideons. We also have information about the church. Also, if you are a first-time visitor here, we'd like to get to know you. Of course, we're going to shake hands and greet, but our memories aren't that good here at First Baptist. So if you could fill out some information about yourself and just put it in the plate in the back, we'd appreciate that. Also, we do have that plate. Tonight and tomorrow, we are collecting an offering as you give. We're not passing the plate like we do on Sunday mornings. But if you like what God is doing through Matt and Luke, please give. They've come a great distance to be with us tonight. And we want to honor them as they honor God. So please give freely. And since we're going to be here for three times, give numerous <laughs> And I do believe, I'm just double checking my notes, I think that's all my announcements. Let's see. Oh, Sunday. If you, if you don't go to church, come back here. We'd love to have you here for our 1045 worship with Matt and Luke. But you would also be privileged to potluck lunch we're providing afterwards. I guess you guys could leave your other churches afterwards and come over and join us as well. But just don't leave in the middle of the pastor's sermon to be here. It looks very rude. Um, but with all that being said, I do believe I'll turn it over to Matt and let you introduce from here. Do you need a microphone? Okay. excited to be here with you uh, tonight and tomorrow night and Sunday morning and uh, I told Luke yesterday before we head up here if we if we do our job right when we leave here nobody will remember our name but we'll be fixated on the name of Jesus when they get home and when they go back to their workplaces supercharged not that they're talking about anything that we did here but they're fixated on his word on praises to him that is the focus 
we didn't come here to perform for you. Uh, we came here to worship shoulder to shoulder with you in the trenches of Horton, Kansas. Because there's a calling here on all of you. You have different people that you're around. And God is preparing you to minister to them. Because they're, they're watching every, every moment of your actions. And uh, we're here tonight to uh, just worship His holy name. And it is a pleasure that my brother in Christ, Luke, and his wonderful wife, Ashley, and their family got to come up here with us. I'm a Brown County native. Luke is from Fredonia, so uh, he made the trip with us. He's going to preach tonight, and uh, you're just in for a special treat uh, for him. So we're going to sing uh, this first one, and we actually adopted one of Luke's kids to come sing with us. This is little Ellie. And she loves to sing. And I said, honey, you should just come. I know you know these songs. Just come up here and sing these. Um, our first hymn is uh, Victory in Jesus. We ask that you stand with us. We're going to sing. Um, I'm, does your hymnal have three verses in it? Or do you guys have it on a projector? Or what do you have? Okay. There we go. You guys ready? 473. 473, yeah. When I holler out the hymn, you can let them all know what number. Yeah, we're all flying by the seat of our pants now, aren't we? Here we go. 473, shoulder up with each other, sing loud, sing full, sing to the Lord. Here we go. One, two, three. Well, I heard an old, old story.
crowd in Horton, Kansas, you know how to worship, you know how to sing. <laughs> it ain't like that everywhere we go, but boy, what a blessing it is when, when you do hear it. Um, we're going to do What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And, uh, let's see. 435. 435. Well, I'm not even looking in the same hymnal you are, so. <laughs> 206 for me. <laughs> the kids and I just learned a song uh, not long ago called uh, Have You Met My Friend? And when you're raising kids in this world today, who you call friend is, boy, that does a lot of things in life because I've called the wrong people friend, led me down a pretty dark path. And uh, if you remember in the Bible, uh, when Judas comes back and Jesus says, well, hello, friend. Sometimes your friends uh, that hold close can sometimes treat us the worst and cause division and break a relationship that causes a sever, a hardening of the heart between sometimes family members. But I'll tell you what, if there's one thing that breaks down those walls, it's the humbling and forgiveness of Christ that can rebuild and, and replenish those relationships that are bone dry and one day brought back together. If we're not friends with Jesus, there ain't a counselor on this planet that can pull those things back together. And, and, and it seems like the way the climate of the world is doing today is just pushing us further and further apart. It's dividing us more and more and more and more. Further and further. Trying to find every difference it can by labeling us with all of these labels it's going to try and put on us to further divide. But if we as people are to come back to the middle, the one thing that is going to do that is the love of Christ because unfortunately it's hard truth. It's going to be distasteful to some. Some are going to hate it, resist it, push back from it. But that part we must never, ever, 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 ever compromise. Ever. And I'm grateful to call Jesus my friend and my father and my savior and a whole laundry list of other wonderful things. You guys ready? Ready, Ellie? I'm glad Mom and Dad let her sing with us because it is a blessing to have her. We might just have the whole crew up here tomorrow night. Hey, Joel, did you bring your ukulele? Bring it tomorrow night. We might, let, you guys come up tomorrow night. Maybe we'll have you come play with us. You guys thought we planned this out. We're flying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> here we go. Ready?
back before Luke comes up here, and uh, and tonight this is this is a, a hymn for for those of us that uh, I several years ago grew up in church. Just because I was going to church doesn't mean I was living and outpouring a godly life. It is really easy to put on a fake persona and. Uh, Walking in the flesh is something that I, as a young man, a foolish young man, walking waywardly, almost, you know, like the prodigal son, I had not yet come to the end of myself. Pridefully, pride had blinded my eyes, had muted my ears, had hardened my heart, and finding myself in a life of addiction, you know, any, any life's pleasure, whatever it be, trying to find the easy way out of the situation, rejecting what God's Word says, not honoring thy father and mother, which they're both here tonight, and my sophomore English teacher. <laughs> but regardless of that, I wouldn't dare let pride not keep this message of redemption from you. While I was dead in sin, the biggest illusion I have was I'm good. I'm good. God will forgive me. I'm good. Meanwhile, I'm leading others astray. Others are watching me with this double-minded mixed message of what it is to be a Christian. They're watching that. They see one thing. They see me do another. But I'm here to tell you the great harvest that's about to happen in Corton, Kansas is due to the realization that all of us where we go home, our neighbors. Tomorrow night I'm going to tell a story about love thy neighbor. And what God can do with that. What God will do with that. If we will be obedient, get out of our comfort zones, open up our dinner table, open up our schedule after work. What can happen? But tonight I'm here. If you're sitting here tonight and, and you've had the persona. And your eyes have become glazed over. Your ears have become muted. And you find yourself quietly. Because the thing about addiction is. You can quietly do it and build all these walls around it to conceal it and hide it. And never want to bring it forth. But the only thing it does is it hardens our heart more. And it makes us resist God's truth more. And it leads us down a path of darkness more. And it's not a place I want any of us to be. And Jesus is drawing us home. But we must come lay our pride aside. And bring that sin out and lay it at the foot of the cross. Because it's His. It's crucified. First Peter says, lay all your, your anxieties and your worries on me because I care for you. And we're trying to bear a heavy load that's not meant for us to bear. It's meant for Him. This song brought me to my knees some years ago. And we sing it in our church fellowship down in Fredonia a lot. Because uh, there's people around us seems weekly almost, that are coming home. This song has four verses. Lord, I'm coming home. What, what number? What is it? 341. It's got four verses, and every time I sing these verses, man, it just, it's about all I can do to sing the chorus of it without crying. say to my kids, blessed is he whose testimony is boring. You know what I mean by that? It's every parent's wish that their, their children never stray. But for those that do, I'm so thankful for this time for praying grandmas and praying grandmas and dads and grandpas and cousins. For those that do, go astray and then come back to the fold. Because this family sitting up here today is to God's glory. Because I don't deserve it. His glory. And I figured, well, if God's going to give me another chance, we're going to use the whole thing to praise His name all day long, all night long, wherever God's going to take us. So here we go. I've wandered far away from God.
may we might have victory and eternal life in heaven with your Father. I pray a blessing over Brother Luke tonight as he brings the word and uh, that you would begin the harvest that's going to happen here in Horton, Kansas, Lord. Thank you for this time. And uh, may we continue eyes fixated on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, friends. Uh, we're going to attempt to keep the kids still for a little bit. And uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Luke Baker. How about a hand for him? And this is my heart. 
I'm not here to sell you anything. I don't have a booth in the back. I'm not here for um, favor or prestige or fame. Um, I'm only here in obedience. I said yes. I said yes. In obedience to my Savior. To preach His gospel. His true gospel. And I will not manipulate emotions. I will tell the truth. And that's my agenda. There's no secret agenda. The agenda is the gospel tonight. And I pray that if the Lord will open ears and eyes will be open. The thing about the truth is, it un is un it's unshakable. <laughs> it doesn't move. The reason I say I will not manipulate emotions is because revivals built on emotions die. Emotions are not where we derive life from. It is the truth in which all things are given. Emotions are a guide, are just a gauge. They're not the guide. But the truth is the guide. And from truth we have emotions. It's, it's like I said when I began, and I feel this deeply, and Matt and I talk about it a lot, it doesn't matter my condition. I say, how are you? And if, if you said, I'm doing well, then you're ready to worship God, it don't matter. Because if the condition of my faith is that I'm feeling good, or is it that 